Hello and welcome to our next topic about hydraulics. We're talking about friction. Huh? Talking about friction. Well, friction in a hydraulic system, there are two types of friction. Huh? So there's the tube, if you imagine the tube. Huh? There's the liquid running through the tube. There's one type of friction, the outer friction, which is between the wall of the tube and the, the liquid. The fluid itself. Yeah? And the other part is the inner friction inside the, inside the fluid. These two parts. Usually the outer friction, the friction between the pipe and the fluid is much higher than the inner friction. Well, uh, let's see what is this friction causing. Yeah? What is this friction causing? I draw now a piece of pipe here, tube pipe, something like this. Yeah. Here is one position. Here we have pressure one, yeah. pressure one, and here we have pressure two. Okay, and if we are looking at the pressure, this distribution, yeah. If there is no flow at all, if there is no flow at all, we have this situation. Pressure propagation, you remember? Everywhere in the liquid is the same pressure. Okay? This is the situation. This is the pressure. This is the length. Okay? If we have here a certain flow, Q1, yeah. then we will see that this pressure is dropping. Here we have a pressure drop. Delta P1, because caused by this flow Q1. Yeah. If we do have another flow, yeah, bigger flow, Q2, bigger than Q1. Yeah? Then what happens to the pressure drop? The pressure drop is more severe. Okay. Here we have then delta pressure 2. So, what happens? What happens with this pressure drop? I mean, clearly we do have here more energy than we have here, yeah? because the height has not changed. Yeah? Let's also look. Let's make this look more technical here. So the the sea level or something like this, this has not changed. So this part of the pressure equation or the energy equation, Bernoulli equation, is the same. Also the speed has not changed, because here is the same flow like here. Eh? But the pressure is changing. Eh? And we said energy cannot be produced or, or destroyed. Energy can only be transformed. What is happening to this energy here? Eh? What is happening? Well, put your hands together, rub them. Eh? What do you feel? Uh, what is this friction causing? Uh, it's causing apparently black rub shavings and heat. <laughs> yeah. Heat. Uh, and the same thing is happening here. Uh, with this pressure drop, I'm heating up my liquid. Uh, this is a topic. This is a topic. Because I need to cool my liquid at a certain point in time. If my liquid is getting too, too hot, it's not. It's leaving the viscosity uh, parameters I want to have. Yeah? We said hydraulic is temperature depending, yeah? and if this fluid is getting too hot, I might I might have an issue. Yeah? So I need to cool this. Yeah? 
How much cooling is necessary depends on the flow. Yeah? How many liters, cubic meters I pass yeah? and how much pressure drop I'm producing because of this. Yeah? So this work yeah, which I have to get rid of is the volume I've pumped through multiplied by the pressure drop or the pressure change. Yeah? This is actually should work yeah? because here we have cubic meters, yeah? here we have Newton per square meter and if I multiply them I have here Newton meter. Yeah? Force multiplied by length is work. Yeah? So this is Joule. And this amount of, of energy I have to get rid of with a cooler. So the, I'm actually warming up this thing. Another thing is, you know, we have seen that this volume flow here is causing the pressure drop. And this is actually what makes the, the efficiency of a hydraulic system not that good, superior. Because by distributing my energy, I'm wasting energy already. And in a hydraulic system, quite a lot of it. So this pressure drop, from which parameters is this now depending? Well, you can calculate this. You can cal calculate this. You can say the pressure drop, delta P, equals and then there is a coefficient, pressure drop coefficient, it's called zeta, yeah, multiplied by, yeah, there is the density inside, rho uh, half multiplied by v squared. This v here is the flow velocity, yeah, the middle flow velocity. This here the pressure drop coefficient coefficient and this is the resulting pressure drop and we see if we have double the speed we have four times the pressure drop from what things is this pressure drop coefficient uh, depending well you know, on a smooth pipe, on a pipe, not smooth, on a pipe, yeah? on a pipe, we can calculate this pressure drop. Alrighty, pipe, pipe, pipe tube. We can calculate this pressure drop coefficient. Yeah? There is the so called pipe friction coefficient, lambda, yeah? multiplied by the length of the pipe and the diameter, divided by the diameter. This means the longer the pipe is, yeah, the more pressure loss I, will, I can expect, and the smaller the diameter is, the more pressure loss I can expect. Uh, clear, right? If you think about the, the water hose in your garden, maybe, yeah, if you have a short hose, yeah, the pressure drop is not that severe. If you have uh, losing a long hose, then the pressure drop, drop is much severe. Yeah. <laughs> One thing every kid knows, yeah? if you have a hose and there's water running through, yeah? let's say this is the hose, there's water running through, and here we, the water is spitting out. Yeah? It's simply, I can, the water jets, and if I want to get further, because I want to hit mommy or the brother or the sister or who else, yeah, I want to sweat it, yeah? then I have to squeeze or push the end of my tube a little bit together and suddenly the jet is moving much faster. Yeah? <laughs> this is actually an application of this. Yeah? Because if I'm pulling, pushing this together, yeah, then I decrease the flow. Yeah? Because I'm decreasing the flow, I'm decreasing the pressure loss here. Yeah? And when I decrease the pressure loss here, I have here more energy 
potential energy which can be changed to kinetic energy so I can make it go faster, further and then I hit the, my target. <laughs> okay, this is actually an application of this. Yeah? So you see, you, you knew this, yeah? but not the background. This lambda here, this lambda here, this uh, friction, pipe friction coefficient, yeah? this is depending on the Reynolds number. Yeah? And here, Reynolds number, we again with the viscosity, so this is the pipe friction. Coefficient, yeah? and this is depending on the Reynolds number, and also on the type of, of flow, yeah? stream flow. If it's laminar flow, yeah? we can even give a formula for lambda, lamina. This lambda is 64 divided by the Reynolds number. And this Reynolds number we talked last time. Yeah? This is just the stuff where is also the velocity inside and there is the diameter inside and there's also the viscosity inside. Yeah? Lamina. And if it's turbulent, yeah, you have to go into a diagram. Yeah? And then it strongly depends uh, on the roughness of the surface, yeah, if it's a very smooth surface inside the tube, or if it's rough, yeah, if it's concrete, or if it's metal, or if it's rubber. This depends on the roughness or smoothness of the surface inside, and this gives them different, different uh, lambda values. Yeah? Resulting then in a pressure drop. Yeah? This is for pipes. For other things, yeah, I usually don't only have a pipe. Inside the pipe, there are orifices, there are throttle points, there are uh, bands, yeah? there are sharp bands, there are not that sharp bands, there are bows, yeah? there are T junctions, there are valves, there are pop, 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 pop. a lot of things are in there. And from all those things, my pressure drop is depending because of this formula. Yeah? So, for all other things, yeah, others, this zeta yeah, is uh, measured simply. Yeah. If you have usual values, if you have a T junction, yeah, zeta value is around 1 to 3. Okay. If you have a band, 90 degree band, yeah, then we are at 0 0.5 to 1. Okay? If we have a sharp tack, 90 degree corner, yeah, then we are around 1.2. Yeah? If we have a double change, yeah, we are at 2 somewhere. Yeah? And valves, we are somewhere between 5 and 15, yeah? depending on which type of valve we are using. And these numbers are given by the manufacturer of these items. So, and then I have my piping, my hydraulic piping, and then I have my pressure loss. This pressure loss, like I say, is causing heat, and this heat needs to be cooled, and it's causing also that I do not have the whole power which I am putting into this liquid by my pump available at my at my cylinder or motor or whatever I'm driving. Because of this, pressure drops simply. Yeah, so it's pressure drop depending on viscosity, depending on, on the speed, yeah, of the, depending on the length of the piping system, depending on the, on the built-in, yeah, if there's a, a straight pipe or if it's somehow curved, yeah, if there are orifices in and so on. Yeah. These are the things which will influence the efficiency also of my hydraulic system. Okay. Well, that's it. Yeah. That's it. That's all about uh, friction. Yeah. You will hear from me. If you want to go further into details, I 
please refer to their mechanics lessons. Yeah? You will hear there a lot of things about those hydrodynamic stuff. So this is a one not so nice part of hydraulics, yeah? or one part we have to live with. Next time we are also talking about the second part we have to live with, and the second part is called cavitation. Yeah? Also cavitation is causing something. Yeah? What is caused by cavitation and why is it caused, we will hear next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.